Okay. Angelique is watching. Thank you. 
And uh, the Lord gave me a word mm, several months ago, and I've had to kind of sit on it for quite some time. But it's one word, and it's an Aramaic word that Jesus spoke on several occasions, and it is Ephatha. Ephatha. And it means be opened. It's like if I had, sometimes I buy jars of pickles or different things at home, and I get it home and I cannot get the seal off. And I hit it on the side and I whack it with something and eventually it pops open. Well, our spirit inside of us, our heart has a seal on it and it's closed and it's, it's sometimes hard for us to receive from God. He never changes, but we change. You know, from circumstance to circumstance, situation to situation, and different needs. But tonight, I want to read you a great story about um, a man that was deaf and how Jesus opened his ears. And the word is ifapa. It means be open. But it's, it's more than the ear. It's the hearing of the Spirit. So I want to read this story, and it is out of Mark chapter 7, and I'm going to read it out of my beautiful Passion Bible. Mark chapter 7, verse 31 through 37. It says, After this, Jesus left the coastland of Tyre and came through Sidon on his way to Lake Galilee and over into regions of Syria. Some people brought to him a deaf man with a severe speech impediment. They pleaded with Jesus to place his hands on him and heal him. So Jesus led him away from the crowd to a private spot. Sometimes we have to leave people and groups because of unbelief. And so he took him off to the side, and then he stuck his fingers into the man's ears, placed some of his saliva on the man's tongue. Then he gazed into heaven, and he sighed deeply. So in your home right now, everyone sigh deeply. Just, <sighs> Then he gazed into heaven. He didn't look at the man. He looked into heaven. And he sighed deeply, and he spoke to the man's ears and tongue and said, Ephatha, which is Aramaic for open up now. At once the man's ears opened, and he could hear perfectly. And his tongue was untied, and he began to speak normally. And so I just want to talk about how we need to hear that word from Jesus and respond so that our faith can connect with God. And there's several other scriptures. Isaiah 61, 1 says that the spirit of the Lord God was upon me. And Jesus quoted this in Luke 4. And one of the things he said was that he came to open prison doors. And the same word is used there. Ephatha, open prison doors. So the Lord wants to open the crusty places in our heart, the hard places. Sometimes it's, it's not like we do it on purpose. It's just because we live in this world and things happen. And so then in Luke 24, the same thing. He uses the same scripture where the disciples were walking down the road to Emmaus and they're walking along with Jesus, and Jesus has just died on the cross. He's been raised from the dead. People are talking about it, but the scripture says that it was really hard for them to believe. And so he appears on the road, and they're walking, and it isn't until, and it's like a 17-mile journey, so think about that. It's a long trip, and he's opening up the scriptures and talking about the Christ and how he was revealed through the scriptures through the Old Testament. And then when they do dinner and they sit down to have dinner, Jesus breaks the bread and all of a sudden their eyes open. And the same word is used there. Ifatha. 
open. And so my prayer for us as women is that this would be a time where we can receive. Now I know there's a lot of things we can do to give, to bless our families, but I'm talking about a deep spiritual connection with God that we can have during this time. And I just wrote down a few things that sometimes we're, we're closed off because of fear. And I'll tell you what fear's cousin is. Her name is unbelief. Fear and unbelief, that's what kept the, the um, Israelites out of the promised land was unbelief and fear. And so we don't want to be a part of that. So there's other areas, just plain old frustration and hurt, disappointment, grief and sorrow are huge. But what I wanted to do tonight was just remind us that we have the kingdom of God and it is righteousness, peace, and joy. And no coronavirus, nothing can take that away from us. We are kingdom people. So we have righteousness with God. We have peace with God. We have peace in our hearts and we have joy that has nothing to do with our circumstances because those can always change. But we have joy and peace and righteousness. And I just wanna say to each one of you, and I want you to say it with me if you can pronounce that word, ifatha, say it with me. Ifatha, ifatha, just speak it to your own heart now. And I'm gonna put my hand on my heart and you put your hand on your heart. And I'm gonna pray for your heart to be unsealed, opened up, Father, I just pray for our women and all those that are just listening in, Lord, that they would experience your word that opened this deaf man's ear, loosed his tongue, brought healing to so many people, Lord, and ignited faith, ignited a love and a trusting relationship with you, Lord. And we just ask that you would help our hearts to be connecting and open to all that you have, Lord. We receive your touch tonight, Lord, in every home, in every heart, in every city. Lord, we receive your touch and we open our hearts. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to help our hearts and our understanding to be opened. Mm -hmm. Like on the road to Emmaus, Lord, where these disciples' understanding was suddenly opened. And they understood and they received. Lord, we want to be those that can receive during this difficult time so that we have an abundance to give to those around us, Lord, that are in so much need and so much fear. And Lord, I just pray for the women, Lord, here tonight that are completely alone, that they would be reminded that you said, Lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the ages, that you are with us, Lord. Wrap your loving arms around them tonight and give them a big squeeze, a big tight hug. Lord, we are under the wings and the, the shadow of the Almighty, and we're experiencing your embrace tonight, Lord, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm going to introduce Angelique Garrett. She's going to come and do a few demonstrations for you. Miss um, Wendy's amazing word with how to make you. <laughs> I'm Angela Garrett. I'm the children's director here at Cabinet Hood River. And I have a couple fun things for us to do this evening. The first one is making do, or sometimes called gaff. You may have heard it that way. So uh, this is pretty easy. Kids can, uh, you can do this with your kids. It's per perfectly safe. We're going to start with glue, just basic Elmer's glue. And uh, you need four ounces, so it's perfect. This is four ounces of glue right here. So I'm going to dump this whole thing into this bowl. And I'll get as much out as quickly as possible. And then, there's still a little in there, but that's okay. Then I'm going to take the baking soda, and I want one teaspoon of baking soda. I'll dump that in there. And I'm gonna mix that, make sure it's all mixed together. 
And then once that's mixed, I get to add the fun stuff to this, like food coloring. Five, six drops, 10, 15, whatever. If I was doing this with kids, I'm sure there'd be 20 or 25 drops in there. So we'll put a bunch. And then I'm gonna add some glitter, some gold glitter. All right. Then once again, make sure that's all mixed. All right, now I'm going to add the reacting agent, which is this uh, basically uh, contact lens solution, but make sure it has boric acid. We're gonna put all this on our Facebook page, I think, so you'll have all these instructions, um, so you don't need to be writing this down, but you wanna make sure it has boric acid, and that's, um, well, maybe I can't open it that way. Um, that's what's going to make this react, and I want one tablespoon of this. And this is a half tablespoon measure that I'm using. So I'm gonna put two of those in there. And you should see it start to change into some of my stuff. It's already starting to stick to my spoon. That's a good sign. That means it's reacting. Ooh, look at that. That's lovely. And then, you know what, I'm gonna do this with gloves because I have another thing to show you when I'm done with this, so. Um, so what's happening is the glue is a polymer and you can kind of think of a polymer as a spaghetti and it's a long, uh, long chain. And so when spaghetti's cooked and it's just the spaghetti noodles, they slide easily. And once you add cheese sauce or anything amazing to it, then the noodles all start to stick together. Well, that's exactly what the boric acid is doing. It's, it's cross-linking those polymers and it's making it all stick together. So the glue has now become this blob of slime that you can have endless hours of fun with. So there is goo or gap. And just like that. All right, number two. I'm gonna set this, make sure I'll set it right back here. All right, this one, I'm gonna show you how to make homemade hand sanitizer, because uh, it is hard to find right now. Let me get to my um, recipe, so I make sure I get it right. So you start with um, isopropyl al alcohol, 70% is the best. If you have 91%, there is a way to dilute it. Um, instead of four cups of alcohol, I'm gonna do three and a third cups alcohol, which I already have in here, and two thirds cup water. So I'm gonna add that and dilute it just a little bit. This is actually from the WHO and the CDC. Um, so this is an approved way of making hand sanitizer. And of course, we all know washing your hands is the best thing to do right now, but if you don't have it, um, hand sanitizer is your next best option. Then I'm gonna put in three tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. And one, two, three. And one to two tablespoons of glycerin. And you can get this at any pharmacy. Um, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put two in there. Um, maybe it doesn't come out very fast. There's one, and two. And then you can add, if you'd like, you can add uh, essential oils for some scents. Just the only warning on that is make sure you're not dealing with any allergies to any scents before you put those in there. And um, not knowing who's gonna be using your hand sanitizer. But if it's your family and you know and you're familiar with those essential oils, by all means add it. I'm gonna add a few drops of lavender. And then I'm going to mix it. And that is your homemade hand sanitizer. And then I just grabbed a couple um, things from home. This is one you can pour it into. Uh, I like to keep some in my purse, and so that's a good purse size. And make sure you label it to hand sanitizer so people know what it is. 
And I'm just gonna fill this one up. And then, of course, if you want to have one sitting on your counter at home for those emergencies, that's what I got this one for. And you can fill this one up. However you would like to, to dispense it is entirely <laughs> up to you. Or overflow it over the top. And I have some on my hands, so I'm going to go ahead and go like this. So that is your lavender homemade hand sanitizer. I hope that helps. Um, have fun with that. Again, that's going to be on our Facebook page. Rachel will get that up there. And you can see the recipe for the goo and the gap and the explanation of what the, sci what the science is behind the gap. And then also our homemade hand sanitizer that I showed you here tonight. So I'd like to just take a minute to pray for and what's on my heart is moms home with their kids, but also just as we're adjusting to this new phase of uh, doing school at home and what our teachers are doing. And so I just want to take a minute to pray for that. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you are present in this. And I know people are feeling that, are feeling your presence. And so I thank you that you've given us that spirit of uh, a sound mind. And so I just pray that over the moms, Lord God. I pray that over the women watching tonight. I pray that over the moms who are home unexpectedly with their kids all day long, every day, Lord. And just that you would give them that spirit of a sound mind. Lord, that it gives them creativity, that they have um, the ability to have grace for each moment. You, you're providing that for them every step of the way. And I thank you for that, Lord. And as the children move into doing school online, however that looks, uh, whichever school they're going to, Father, I just pray for it to be seamless, that parents don't feel overwhelmed with what they're now having to help their, their children learn. Um, some of it looks different than when they learned it. But I just pray for a calm over every parent, Lord, that's sitting at the table with their child as they're learning a piece for them, knowing that um, they've got this. They can do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Their kids are going to get it. And the teachers are working really hard, Lord. I know how hard the teachers are all working. So cover them as well, especially the women out there that are teachers, Father. Just be with them. Be giving them creative ways to reach out to their students. I know they're missing them. I know they would love to see them and hug them and know how they can be praying for them right now, Lord. And, and so I just pray for those connections to still be made and a peace through this as children are home, as moms are home, as teachers are teaching online, Lord God, in new unexpected ways. And I thank you for your creativity. I thank you for your peace, Lord. I thank you for your grace. And I thank you that you are above all of this. And this is in your hands. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, Lord, just, um, I know that there's been a lot of fear, Lord, and I know because I've been there, Lord, I'm pregnant. I know there's mm -hmm. lots of many pregnant moms out there. Um, and Lord, there's just fear for our children and for our for the babies that have yet to be born. Um, for our elderly loved ones, Lord, but there's some very real fears out there, Lord, and, and you tell us to fear not, not because it's not valid, Lord, not because, because it, there isn't suffering in this world, Lord, but because that you're bigger than, than it. Lord, you tell us not to fear because we don't need to fear, because we have you. And so, Lord, I just pray that you release us from fear, Lord, I pray you release me from fear, I pray, I pray you release all, all moms from fear, all all single ladies from fear, Lord, all, um, just everyone, Lord. I just pray you release us from that fear that holds us in bondage, Lord, for, for when we're afraid, um, we are so much more liable to let things in that are not of you, Lord. When we're afraid, Lord, we, we succumb to things like, um, insecurity, loneliness, Lord, fear brings on so many of those things. So, Lord, I just pray that you release us from the bondage of fear. Lord, the very real fear that is around us, God. And, and just give us your hope. Lord, just fill us so full of your hope and your life that we have no room for fear, Lord. And that not only will we not fear, but we will be able to be peace to all of us, all who are around us, Lord, that, that when we are on Facebook and we are on Instagram and when we, when we are interacting with people, Lord, that we would be hope bringers, 
Lord, you say, blessed are the peacemakers, Lord. So, Lord, let us be peacemakers in this time where we are so caught up in fear, Lord, where our world is caught up in fear, and it feels like everything is ending. So I just pray that your spirit comes upon us and, and does that for us, Lord, because we can't do it on our own. So we surrender to you, humbly come before you, asking, Lord, that you release us from that bondage. Thank you. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. And for those that have lost their jobs and have uh, are concerned about their finances, Lord, we just thank you that you are the God who provides. And we will not lack. These are times of abundance for your people, Lord, and we pray for abundant provision, that their confidence would come up, Lord. Your word says, I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it, to bring it to maturity. And so, Lord, no matter what the circumstance, we thank you that the church is continuing to grow and each one of us in our homes, in our families, Lord, are developing our spiritual lives. We're growing. We're being strengthened by the presence of God, by the word of God, and we will not fear. And we just thank you for abundance, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for the great comforter, one of the names of the Holy Spirit is a comforter. And so, Lord, we receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit to surround each and every home that's represented here at Covenant. Thank you for joining us for this women's pop-up. We've enjoyed being in your home, and we look forward to some other opportunities that we're going to maybe post and plan ahead. But God bless you. We're going to check and follow up and make sure if you have any prayer needs, please be sure and post them. And we will get the word out to the leaders and we will be praying for you. Remember, you're not alone. Remember to stay open to the presence of God and hear what he has to say so that he's not sighing because he can't get through to us. But we're receiving everything that he has. He has amazing things for you and especially joy. So receive his joy tonight and be strengthened in his presence. We love you.